Hello and welcome back to the channel and today's video really we're going to have a short discussion about what falconry actually is. Well falconry isn't flying birds like Wurzel here. There's far better eagles to employ for falconry itself. But when you are working with birds of prey, of course you employ many falconry techniques and practices, whether it's to train the birds, to house the birds even, to get the birds fit. The difference is with most of the birds here at the falconry center, they're actually, they're actually not falconry birds. Some are but most of them are birds of prey that we work with to educate the public in a fun, exciting way. And through education, what we achieve, the end game is conservation of some of these magnificent animals. If you don't know about them, you don't love them, you don't care about them and we cannot have conservation. So that's our job here in our working with birds of prey setting training birds of prey very different from falconry proper falconry so so i work with all kinds of birds of prey from all different kinds of groups of birds of prey whether it's owls vultures eagles kites buzzards and so on and so forth now most of those birds of prey i work with aren't falconry birds I train many of them using falconry techniques. Um, I care and house and equip them, mostly with falconry equipment and housing and ideas, but they're not falconry birds. Um, they're flown most days of the week um, to a high standard and to keep them fit, but it, it doesn't make them falconry birds. And that itself doesn't make me a falconer. Now I am a falconer and I work with birds of prey that are not much good for falconry, that aren't falconry birds, in an educational and conservation manner. I work with the public, I work with children, we do displays, um, I manage Icarus falconry, and we've got key staff here and volunteers that, that do the same thing. Now, I am a falconer, and the staff are falconers, or some of them are, but they still work with these birds that are not falconry birds. And while they're doing that, they're not practicing falconry. So it can be quite confusing. You've got people that understand birds of prey. You've got people that understand how to keep and fly and train birds of prey. You've got people that fly birds of prey wild and free on a daily basis. And yet they're not necessarily falconers. So why not? What, what would make, what, what do they have to do? What hoop do they have to jump through to call themselves falconers? or to call the birds they fly falconry birds and it really really is simple this is something that's argued back and forth now all the time on social media um, and there isn't any need to be there's no need to be ashamed of being a falconer and there's no need to be ashamed of someone that works trains and, and educates people or conserves birds of prey that aren't falconers they're different things that's all they are so a falconer is someone that takes wild game with a trained bird of prey. The word falconry means to take wild game in its natural state with a trained bird of prey. That essentially sums it up. So what does that make falconry? Well, without doubt, it makes it a form of hunting. And here in the UK, that switches people off terribly. And the irony of it is, the irony of it is, one irony is that a lot of people that frown upon any form of hunting eat meat. They eat meat that someone else has caught, as in a raised animal. They eat meat that someone else has killed, uh, often in a very unpleasant way. If you don't know where your meat comes from, find out. Um, if you don't know how your meat is killed, you really ought to, you ought to see it. Because it's kind of hypocritical, really, isn't it? If, if you're eating an animal um, and you're turning a blind eye to, to how it was raised and how it was killed, for sure. Um, it's a strange thing, but those people that do turn away a bit from hunting, um, from falconry, from fishing, from shooting, I think the most difficult thing for those people to understand, um, and the thing that kind of it gets to the point it's not worth arguing with them about, 
because they will literally la 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 they don't want to understand most good hunters certainly I, i'm a uk guy i can only talk about here in the uk most proper hunters of any kind are massive naturalists they are often custodians of their part of the natural world and they are the people that care more than anything else about not only the animals that they hunt but about the ecosystems those animals live in and that's a fact and I absolutely love falconry it's a passion you can't practice falconry successfully as a hobby if you're not living it by dreaming it living it eating it doing it it is some of, one of those things you just can't be successful and usually you'll get bored it is almost a lifestyle choice you have to be passionate about your falconry and when i'm out hunting with my birds of prey whether it's a house's hawk or zeus the golden eagle goshawks it is enthralling it is something i enjoy very very much indeed and to those people that call themselves antis that's the bit the stumbling block that they cannot get their heads around or understand because if you enjoy your hunting they think that means you enjoy killing animals and it's a ludicrous assumption i can't stand killing animals i do eat meat i can't stand killing animals i am a naturalist to the core i'm an animal lover to the core i keep all kinds of animals and study them and love them and killing animals is something that comes to me very difficult indeed all the hunters i know none of them go hunting because they enjoy killing animals that is not why people go hunting the people that go hunting that enjoy killing animals they're psychopaths not really hunters and there's a difference so why do i enjoy hunting then which may end up with me killing an animal well firstly it's immersive you're immersed in the natural world there is no better place to be than out among nature you get to see things in nature that other people would never witness in their lifetimes and from a falconry sense of view whether if i'm flying zara here you only ever get to see birds of prey doing their thing when they're chasing natural quarry it is very different to what you see at a bird of prey experience a bird of prey display because those birds go through the motions they're mostly apex predators and they know they can put the bare minimum in to get a reward that's what predators learn to do that's how they survive they learn how to use the least calories to get the most food when these birds are in their natural state chasing natural quarry they know they have to use everything they've got every bit of speed every bit of power all of their fitness and more beyond pulling from their soul to catch their prey and all the maneuverability they've learnt, and all the knowledge they have of their quarry they've learned over time the maneuvers that that animal that bird or mammal may take to evade capture and they learn to anticipate it are we there to kill a lot of stuff not at all i'd go out with a lamp and a gun at night if i wanted to kill a lot of stuff i don't practice falconry to kill things i hope my birds catch something at some point to reward them for their monumental efforts and they get an incredibly incredibly good hot dinner i often do talks at wis and things like that and when I asked the, the ladies there, uh, how many head of game my golden eagle Zeus must catch in a five month season of winter, hunting three or four days a week, they said, well, it must be hundreds or thousands, you know, those poor animals, he's huge. Well, firstly, he hunts the mighty brown hare, which weighs as much as the eagle. Why do we hunt hares? Are they horrible things? Do I want to kill them? No, no. I revere them. They're one of the most amazing animals to run in the UK countryside. We hunt them because they're the natural arms race, evolution between predator and prey for the golden eagle. How many do I average a year? He catches six or seven a year. But for that, we see hundreds of spectacular flights. And what becomes, as the bird leaves the glove, two wild animals in their natural state 
predator and prey in action just like you'd see on a wildlife film but that cameraman may have spent months or years to capture that one bit of footage we did get to see these animals in nature through a moment in time doing their thing don't bite my lip not eating it so fulker is hunting and i do eat meat as do many of you watching this um, if you've gone to a slaughterhouse an abattoir and you've seen animals being killed and you've become a vegan because of it fair play fair play it's not a nice sight. Find out where your meat comes from. Falconry will feature in this channel for sure. Will blood and gore feature in this channel? Absolutely not. Certainly to no more of a level than what's in the average meat eater's fridge for sure. So enjoy the channel, enjoy the falconry episodes. And I hope that gives you a little insight into what falconry actually is. And of course, it takes you to meet amazing people. We live in a world of backstabbing blighters, but we also live in a world of some really good, honest, decent people. And we get to go places. We get to go to other countries because our fulkery pulls us there. And we get to go to some magnificent parts of the British countryside. That's where it takes you. Whether you hunt with a camera and a lens, you hunting images of animals, whether you hunt with a fishing rod and maybe you release anything you catch, maybe you eat them. Whether you hunt with a gun or a bird of prey, it's an immersive, holistic experience. And the point we do it for, ironically, isn't to kill animals. It'll be hard for some of you guys to understand. Keep watching the channel will take you to some amazing Fulkery places for sure. What a beautiful girl Zara is. So talking about beautiful places Fulkery takes you, the boys, Kyle and Tommy, went for a weekend away to the Yorkshire Moors up in North Yorkshire, uh, rabbit hawking, and just check out this beautiful montage. What a place to be. It's not about hunting, it's about the whole immersive experience. Absolutely breathtaking. Enjoy. Hi guys. Um, we're up in Yorkshire today, uh, North Yorkshire. Um, we're just going on a, on a hawking field meet. Um, we're just driving to the spot where we've been promised plenty of rabbits. Um, we're just, just admiring the scenery really. We're, we're from Flatland, Northamptonshire. Um, and we're just in awe of this beautiful landscape really. I think it's another one of those things that, that hunting and, and falconry is all about is being outside and enjoying nature um, and beautiful landscapes like this. It's, it's like something from a Yorkshire tea box, it's gorgeous. Um, so we're, we're not too far away now from where the rabbits are um, and hopefully we'll be able to get a, a bit of action on footage of today's hawking. Um, so come and join us on top of the rabbit warrens later. Oh, God. 
はい。はい Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe so you can keep abreast of everything that's going on here in my extraordinary life.